congratulations on the uh, the Emmy wins. Kind of impressive. All the lots of technical things, the best uh, mini series and stuff. Is that is that kind of cool to be involved in something that's just been kind of so well received? Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's, it's great. Pretty cool. I, I, we were sitting next to each other during during the Emmys, and we we're sitting there, and and you keep telling yourself. It was about it was about the project, you know what I mean. It was about the job. It was about what we did, you know. And and, and you don't care one way or another. Mm -hmm. And as the show was going on, and on, and on, and you're sitting there, and about two hours into it, we just kind of lean to each other like, if we don't win, I'm gonna be pissed off. I have to sit there, <laughs> you know. What I mean? sitting, we don't get up on that stage. Ah, uh, it's a long <laughs> broadcast. <Yeah. laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. But at least you know you got a chance of walking away with some stuff at the end. Just no, think about was, the poor audience. Yeah, yeah, I know. I felt bad for them. Now. Right, right. See our poor mugs on the stage. <laughs> uh, it's a special project, a special job, and, and to have it be recognized like that, um, you know, I, 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 I mean, I think we can be proud of that. But I think more importantly, I think we're proud of the story and the story that we were involved in. What do you believe in? I believe in ammunition. It seems to me that if you're involved in a project like this, that at some point you kind of have a little moment of reflection and wonder how you would actually do if you were, you know, if, if you were doing it for real, if, you, if it was, you know, you were out there in the Pacific fighting for real. How do you think you would have uh, managed? Because it seems to be a bit mind-boggling today to think about, you know, putting yourself in that kind of danger, in that position. Well, I mean, uh, I, I, would, I would like to think and believe that, you know, if I had been in those same circumstances that I would have at least did my job or did my part or what I'm supposed to do. Uh, but, you know, that's easier said than done. I mean, uh, you know, that's when, when all that chaos starts happening and uh, you, you see what they experienced, uh, you know, for all I know, what if I ended up the one hiding and not wanting to come out? You know, I mean, it's... Yeah. Uh, it's easier said than done, you know, and, and a lot of people talked big and you yeah. Know, I, I know one thing's for sure. I, I would just not be in the Navy. I, I, I'm not handling this boat or all yeah. the ship. Excuse me, you know. Uh, I, I don't know how people join the Navy. I, I really don't. I don't know how people. I mean, in wartime, can you imagine sitting on this ship right now and the bombs are rushing over your head and you're, and you're just down waiting for something to hit and just, yeah. that's it. You're done, man. You know. Yeah. It's just bad enough that you've got people trying to kill you and you've got to deal with seasickness as well. Yeah, right, right. yeah, claustrophobia. And drowning. Mm -hmm. Drowning. It's actually, it's, let's Don't, get off the yeah. ship right now. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it sounds it's terrible. Yeah. Um, obviously, uh, filmmaking can be an arduous process of its own. I mean, and it, it certainly looks like you guys were put you know, through the ringer a bit. I mean, what was the kind of toughest, uh, what were the toughest days that you had on the shows? <laughs> I'm sorry. You want to take that? It's just hard. I mean, it, like every day it kind of blends into the, the <laughs> next. I mean, it was one thing after another. I, I don't know about the toughest days. Somebody be a good guy and just shoot me. Because it was such a big, uh, uh, you know, production, you know, there were times where you'd have, you know, maybe a couple weeks off or, or something. Uh, but uh, I think, you know, like Badge is saying, you know, it all kind of, blended all together and it was all you know just from the beginning to the end it was it had its certain points where maybe some days seemed a little more challenging than others but uh, overall it was uh, something that I think we were living the moment and, and uh, it was uh, it took a lot of it it took a lot out of us it mm -hmm. took everything we had I mean mentally and, and physically it, we uh, I mean I, I for me, it was easily the, the most physically demanding job I've ever worked on, and, and I think emotionally, it, it surprised me uh, to the uh, point where I didn't I didn't realize how invested emotionally I was going to get. That it was really we had to have conversations many times where, you know, he he helped me uh, come out of a place where I was kind of you know not sure of why I'm I'm feeling this way, and then. We kind of helped each other by yeah. talking. Yeah, I, I see. Every every actor kind of went into a hole of their own. You know, I, I don't know if it's right to say uh, what was the worst day of filming. It feels strange when we're shooting something that that was about stories of men who were there for real, mm -hmm. and they were having the worst days. Mm -hmm. You know, our days are easy. We go back to the hotel at the end right. of the day. So you we would have strange guilty. days. Well, I don't, I don't know about guilt, man. I, I, we, we were very clear about what our job is and, and what we're supposed to be doing, but but the holes was the pressure. 
uh, uh, the job was difficult emotionally uh, and spiritually. And, yeah. I mean, it's our, we're actors, man. You know, we're daydreamers, dude. Like, I, I will, you tell me a lie and I'll believe it. You know what I mean? You say, you know, be in this story and we go there. Mm -hmm. and, and you go there willingly and, and you carry things with you. You try not to take that home with you, but you mm -hmm. carry things with you. Um, there was, you know, it wasn't so much bad days or good days. It was just strange days where you'd see something and something would happen right in front of you. Mm. You just can't believe that's happening. You know, funny things, weird things. I mean, whether it's, you know, people running around getting seasick on boats and throwing up, you know, or, or you know, arguments or anger or, or tough circumstances or, or just the kangaroos. I mean, it's kangaroos, man. I'm sitting there on set one day and these kangaroos come bashing through set and literally I'm sitting on a rock and three kangaroos are coming right at me and I'm sitting there with a Tommy gun and, and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get killed by some kangaroos. And I stand up to shoot them, then realize this is fake, I don't have anything in here. And I drop it down, curl up in the ball, and these kangaroos go <laughs> and jump right behind me. You know, and that, I don't know, is that a good day or a bad day? I don't know, but that was, that's never happened to me since. <laughs> I think since they didn't yeah. jump on you, that's a good day. I think so. They can kill a man, you know? A little kick to the head, I guess, uh, you know? Yeah, those yeah. things are, yeah. those things are brutal. We've been swallowed by the jungle and 5,000 Japs waiting to kill us. Did you get, um, did you speak to any vets, I mean, people who, you know, you were playing or, you know, people who were there, did they, you know, did that help? Kind of? Well, you know, I, I didn't really get a chance, uh, I don't know about you, but I, you know, I didn't really get a chance too much to, to speak to vets uh, before we actually started shooting. Mm -hmm. um, it was kind of during the process uh, I got a chance to meet and talk to uh, Chuck Tatum, who served with Basil and on Iwo Jima, and his character is portrayed uh, in, in the Pacific as well. And, uh, you know, there were other veterans that would come by set, uh, and we, we'd share stories. Or In Australia, there was that big day, that event, where we uh, met uh, a bunch of uh, veterans, and some that were from Iwo Jima, from Guadalcanal, Peleliu, and uh, for me, it was kind of interesting. I got introduced as uh, you know, Captain Dale Dye introduces me to one of the vets and says, uh, "This is this is John Seda who's playing John Bazalone." And I remember the guy just the guy just looked at Captain Dale Dye and went, "No one could play Bazalone." He didn't even stick. I'm, you know, I'm standing with my head out like this, you know. And he goes, "No one could play Bazalone." I just went, uh, "Nice to meet you." <laughs> That's a confidence. And shook his head. And what I'm going to say, this is a guy that you know. Uh, uh, I mean, the stories that he had were just unbelievable. The experiences that he had, uh, and what he was describing, we had just shot scenes that were exactly like what he described, which was about Japanese soldiers with the napalm on them and them taking advantage of that and just burning them, you know, just, uh, just watching them just burn. And, and he's describing uh, events that happen like that, and it's like, in my head, I'm going, we just shot that. We just shot a scene that this describes exactly like you said. A lot of that happened a lot with a lot of the veterans, and I just remember thinking, man, when they see this, uh, I just don't. I can't imagine how they're going to feel when they see it.